What's up everybody, I'm Jesse Showalter and welcome back to the series all about designing and coding a responsive landing page from start to finish. In this episode we're going to be adding a really basic responsive navigation to the site. Nothing flashy, nothing fancy, and definitely nothing schmancy. Let's get to it. So um, you can see I didn't put a whole lot of thought or time or energy into this thing. I just figured that you'd be able to, you know, click the little hamburger menu and the thing would appear and then it would go away if you wanted it to go away. That's what we're kind of going for and let's just refamiliarize ourselves with what we have. We have our code on the left, we have our uh, browser open on the right hand side, I have Gulp actually already running in my terminal. I'm using Visual Studio Code. Terminal's built right in, super, super nice. I can just tuck that away now that I'm not using it. And all my files are over here. I can tuck those away. I have my index.html file open and my nav.sass. And this is exactly where we left off. If I just stretch my browser all the way down, you'll see it's not really responsive, right? It's breaking, like things are kind of like stepping outside the bounds of the browser window. We can't see certain links. It's just not a good experience. So we wanna go with that really quickly designed experience to make sure it's actually usable. So the first thing we're gonna need to do is we're gonna need to step one, well, let's fix this. I don't know why there's not a hashtag in that. But step one, we're gonna need to isolate those three links and we're gonna wanna make them disappear when the browser hits a certain width and we wanna make the hamburger icon actually appear at that same width. Uh, I've already exported um, that asset for the hamburger menu. You can see it's right in here. It's icon dash menu. So that's gonna be just fine and dandy. We're ready with that guy. We're probably gonna wanna put that in right away. Let's call that another list item with an A inside of it. And inside of that A tag, we're just let's just drop the SVG right in the image tag itself. So icon dash menu, there it is. Now we have four links right inside of our navigation. Okay, that's really easy. We wanna give this list item, really quickly before we click over to the SAS, wanna give this list item a special class. Let's call it nav-toggle, okay? Let's come over into our CSS here, or our SAS, and we're just going to address the LI with the class of nav dash toggle and then we're going to want to just because we don't want it to display in the standard view right the desktop or large kind of view we, we just want to say display none so we're going to hide it away and hopefully hopefully li with a class of nav dash toggle will actually make it disappear just like that so there we go so far so good we're all done we can pack it up right no, I'm just kidding, we got more to do. Okay, next thing we wanna do is we want to kind of isolate these three links. So I think the easiest way to isolate, you know, those links is gonna be to actually just wrap them inside of a div. So let's call that div with a class of responsive uh, dash nav, okay? And we'll just open up that div tag and we will isolate those three links just like that. We're gonna write a media query, and I usually drop media queries in line with each CSS selector. This is one of those few times when I will actually come down below and say this is responsive nav styles, like that. Okay, so let's write our media query. Writing media queries is really easy. You're gonna start out with the at media symbol, okay? And then you're gonna write a screen and, and you wanna write whatever sort of parameters. So we're gonna open up a set of parentheses, not a slash, and we're gonna say max width of, what was it, 750 pixels. Now anything we write in here should take place, okay? Supposedly. So <laughs> let's go and actually affect our div of the class of responsive nav. So we'll say a class of responsive dash nav, and let's just try things out really quick. Background with the color of red. So hopefully, right around there, boom, we're getting a background of red, but we don't want it to be background of red. We just want it to be display none, okay? And likewise, we want to take this same list item with our nav of toggle. And at the same exact time, what we want to happen is we want it to display block. 
and hopefully what we'll get is a perfect switch at the same time. Right? That's great, that's easy. We've done that with like five lines of CSS so far, that's like epic. The next thing we need to do is, we don't actually want our, our responsive nav to disappear, we want it to, well actually we do want it to disappear. We want it to disappear, and the, but we want it to have a style for when it reappears, does that make sense? Okay, so instead of displaying it none right now, I'm just gonna comment that out, and I'm gonna type background with a color of red, okay? We wanna style what that thing's actually gonna look like when we tap that toggle switch. We're gonna use JavaScript to make that toggle switch or that hamburger menu tappable. It's gonna be like five or six lines of JavaScript, not a big deal. Um, and, and yeah, so we just wanna style this thing up a little bit, okay? Now, you can see if we just save this, our, our style is on, right? And we're using the same exact navigation. And if I take the class of unfold off, it's going to disappear. We just need to find a way to add that class onto our actual um, like entire div with a class of responsive nav. Um, to do that, we want to use this toggle button or this hamburger menu as that kind of like area or that tappable area. Basically, it's gonna be an event handler for us. Uh, there's a lot of ways you can do this. I'm gonna go kind of the simple old school way by adding some JavaScript kind of like language here in the HTML and then connecting it in my JavaScript. First thing we need to do is we need to stop the basic JavaScript or stop the basic action from happening. When you tap a link, the browser wants to refresh. We wanna stop that from actually happening. The way we're gonna do that is come into where our actual link should go, and we're gonna write JavaScript, and uh, then we're gonna come right here. JavaScript, we're gonna write a semicolon, void, and then put a zero inside of there, and then a semicolon at the end. So we're gonna, vo using JavaScript, we're gonna void out the normal browser activity that would happen when you click on this button. Then we're gonna add an event handler right here on the HTML. We're gonna say on click um, equals something. Okay, so when this hamburger menu is clicked or tapped or touched or whatever, we want something to happen on that click. And what we want to happen is we wanna run the function that we're about to create over here in JavaScript. So let's just name that function. This function, the function of this thing is going to be to reveal the nav. So let's call it uh, show nav, okay? And it's a function, so we'll just put the parentheses at the end of it. Um, we're gonna show the nav, that's what we wanna do. Let's save that, nothing in our browser should change. The first thing we wanna do is come over to our JavaScript and actually create our show nav function. That's what we're gonna do right now. So we're gonna declare a function called show nav, okay? And we're just gonna open up the brackets like so. And I think it's, for all of you JavaScript, you know, like newbies or people starting, it's always good to make sure that your JavaScript is actually connected and firing before you do lots of work. So we're gonna run something called console.log, which is basically a way to, in our developer tools console, see if things are actually going. So this is working. If, you know, what we've done here and hooked all this stuff up actually works, if we come over to our developer tools and open up our console, when we tap our hamburger menu up here, we should see a message that says, this is working. And it's also misspelled. This is working and it's also misspelled. So that's nice, let's resave it. And you'll see it refresh as we tap. And every time we tap, it is logging it into the console. So we know everything's hooked up. It's working okay, all right, cool. So we can keep that there just so we have it. Um, the first thing we need is declare like a little temporary variable inside of our JavaScript function, okay? So we are going to create a variable called x, and then we're gonna say that that variable x, it's a generic variable, it's equal to a built-in, kind of like baked-in JavaScript function where we can get an element by ID. So what element are we gonna get? We can come over here to our index.html and we can see we wanna get this element by ID. 
but it doesn't have an ID, so we need to give it an ID. We're gonna give it an ID of, and we'll just match the exact same thing that's over here, responsive-nav, okay? So now that we have given our, our div an ID that we can actually go get, we want to access the document, and we wanna say get element by ID, and then we wanna open up our parentheses and just tell it this is the uh, element we wanna get by ID the responsive-nav ID. Okay, so far, so good. We'll just put a semicolon at the end of it. Now that we've grabbed the element we wanna work with by the ID name, and we've stored that information in the browser, the browser is really smart at doing that, the next thing we wanna do is we wanna use that information in our JavaScript function here. How do we wanna use it? Well, we wanna create basically like a toggle switch. How does a toggle switch work? It says, if it's on this side, toggle it over. And if it's on this side, toggle it back the other way. That's what we're gonna be trying to do here. So we're gonna write a little if statement, okay? We're gonna say if um, x, which is the variable, oh, let's get inside our thing here, inside of our parentheses, if x, which is the variable we just described right above, if x has a class name, we wanna say if it's equal to, what is it equal to? Responsive, Dash nav. Okay, what does that mean? It means if it only has the class name of responsive dash nav. Let's go back over to our HTML. You can see if it has this class name, which it will, right? As soon as the browser loads it, it's going to have that class name. If it has that, then we want to do something, right? What do we want to do? Well, we want to whoo, set x class name, right? And we can give it both classes now if we want, or we can do like the quick kind of plus equals. We want to it to equal this plus, we want to equal the previous thing it was, responsive dash nav, plus we want to give it a new one, which is gonna be, we'll give it a little space so it can concatenate nicely, but we wanna give it the class of unfold, right? Okay, that's our basic if statement. It says if it has the class name of responsive nav, then we want to add the class of unfold. But what if it doesn't? Well, that's the other side of our toggle switch. We're gonna send it back, right? We're gonna say else, right? And we'll open up our brackets there. Else, just make x have the class name equal to responsive nav, right? Responsive dash nav. So we're gonna save our JavaScript, our browser refreshes, if we just cross our fingers, this might work, ready? Bam, it opens up our nav, and our close is not working though for some reason. Okay, I don't know. X should have a class name that, ah, that's why. So that was the problem. We were actually still using our strict equals like operator. We should just be actually assigning the value flat out, right? So the other one is comparing them, uh, and then this one is just assigning the value. So that was the problem. So now we should be able to save, come back, and turn our navigation on and off. I'm gonna close our dev tools and just see how this thing looks. So you can see our nav is totally usable right here as we shrink it up. That nav disappears and our hamburger menu comes in, and then we can click it on and click it off, right? Pretty sweet. Pretty nice deal right there, okay. There's a lot more you could do with this. You could make it persistent as it heads down the page so it's fixed to the top. You could make it have an animation. You could not use JavaScript and use pure CSS. There's lots of stuff that you could do, but this is a pretty good standard solution for making a really simple, quick, fast, responsive navigation work for you. Well, that's it. That's a basic way to do responsive navigation on your landing page. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure to leave a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. There's a few more videos in this series coming, so stick around. If you have any questions whatsoever, leave those down in the comments, and make sure you check the description for all those helpful links on responsive navs that are placed there. I hope you guys are having an amazing week designing amazing things, coding amazing things, and keeping things simple. I'll see you in the next one.